Yo, what is up everybody? How's it going? My name is Southern Gamer and today we are going to be doing a video which is something completely different from what I normally do. I normally stream. Uh, but some of y'all may have known that a couple months ago I did a stream on my new PC build which I spent quite a lot of money on. And today I want to do an overclocking video on one of the parts that I have inside the computer which is my graphics card. Uh, I have the RTX 2080 Ti, so I'm going to be doing like a little overclocking guide slash tutorial thing on how to overclock it. Uh, for the overclock, you will need two programs. Uh, those two programs that I have using, that I am using, not have using, that I am using, is Unigen Superposition Benchmark. Uh, this is like the newest, most up-to-date one. Um, I used to use like Valley Haven Benchmark or something like that. I don't remember the exact name of it, but this is like the newest up-to-date one um, It's called Superposition Benchmark. Just Google it, download it, and you'll be good um, Now for the one that we are going to be using to actually overclock the GPU itself will be MSI Afterburner uh, There are many different overclockers that you can use to overclock your graphics card uh, for, ex for example, if you have an EVGA graphics card, uh, you have EVGA Precision X. But this is like the most well-rounded and probably, well, they're all pretty simple, but th this is one of my favorites. So I'm going to just stick with MSI Afterburner. Um, and also, since I am using Streamlabs OBS to record this video, um, I will not be recording the actual benchmark itself from my computer. I will probably just use my phone to record the benchmark so that it does not affect the score. So it's more of an actual score of what your 2080 Ti will be. Um, so what I'm going to do is, you all, you all you do is go to benchmark, benchmark, you go to performance, 1080p extreme, and then you just click on run. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and stop the video here and I'm going to start recording the benchmark on my phone and I will show y'all how the benchmark looks and what will happen. Um, and for for this first test, what I'm going to do is I'm leaving everything completely stock so we can get a full stock setting on here, figure out what the scores are like, and then we will start to uh, do the core clock first. And then once we get the core clock as high as we can to where it crashes, we're going to back it down just a little bit and then we will go to the memory clock. Um, keep in mind that the core clock does not go nearly as high as the memory clock. Memory clock can go way higher. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna go ahead and run it completely stock. Nothing, zero on the memory, zero on the core. The power limit's still at 100. Core voltage is at zero. Everything is completely stock. And I'm just gonna go ahead and start running it. All right, so guys, as you can see, this is the benchmark that is running. Um, if you look over here at the top right corner, it shows all your stats. You got your FPS. Um, it shows your core, your core clock, which is around 1950 to 1935, something around that range. Memory's at 7,000. My temperature's at 45. My GPU utilization's at 94%. Um, and then you got your minimum, average, and max FPS is right there. And this benchmark, um, it benchmarks automatically when you start running it. So I'm going to let this benchmark go all the way through until the very end. And then we will get a little screen that shows all the stats of the benchmark. And then once we get those stats, I'm going to save it as stock. And then uh, we will start to do the overclock. So I will be back on the desktop screen whenever this benchmark has completed. You're back. The benchmark has finished. Um, I have... I did run a benchmark before whenever I first put this PC together to see what my GPU score was. I don't remember exactly what it was because I didn't save it, and I can't find it anywhere on my computer, so I'm assuming I didn't save it. Uh, but if you look up here in this little orange square rectangle thingy, it shows our score, which is 8,324. And then underneath it shows our minimum FPS, which is 46. Our average FPS, which is 62, and then our max, which is 75, and then it also shows my GPU temperature, which maxed out at 47 degrees Celsius, and the GPU utilization, which maxed out at 97%. So that is completely stock settings. So what I'm going to do is we're going to go ahead and screenshot this. Uh, let me put this here, photos, and then we're going to select folder, and 
let me go back and make sure that it's saved. Where do, 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 do this? So there it is, and then I'm gonna rename it. So we're gonna do we're gonna do 2080 Ti stock. So that's completely stock, and then we will come back to that later. So that's that's completely stock, like I said. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up MSI Afterburner or whichever uh, overclock you prefer to use. The first thing that we're gonna do is uh, core voltage. From from what everybody says. Nobody knows for sure if core, vo core voltage even really does anything, um, but it, it, it's not, it can't really hurt your system in any way, so we're just going to go ahead and put that at 100% because that's just what we always do. The power limit uh, is at 100, so we're going to turn that up to 125. Um, I don't know why that, I forgot to do that. I want to keep my temp limit at, okay, hold on, let me redo this. I forgot what was that, was it 84? Really? Really? Okay, well, I'm going to uncheck that, and then we're going to put that up to 125. Leave the temp limit at the same. Um, also, y'all may have noticed from MSI Afterburner, if you look down here at the fan speed percentage, uh, it's still at 25. That will not change for me because my, my, whole, my whole system is water-cooled, so I do not have the GPU fans on the GPU, so there will be no fan speed at all. Uh, but, so, we're, we're going to go ahead and start the overclocking now. Um, let me go ahead and apply that, and we're going to start off with the core clock, okay? So the core clock, for a 2080 Ti, easily, in any 2080 Ti, you should be able to go ahead and get at least 100 right out of the box. So we're going to just do 100 on the core, apply it, and then minimize it, and then I'm going to go ahead and run the benchmark again, and we will see what score we get next. So I will be back right when we get our next score, guys. Okay, we are back after our second benchmark, and if you look up here at our score, our benchmark score has went up around 500 and something points. We now have a score of 8,881. Um, our FPS minimum has went up to 48. Uh, 0.65 um, our average has went up to 66 and then our max has gone up a good bit our max went up to 85 FPS um, if you look at our GPU temps our GPU temps have also went up to 52 now um, GPU utilization that's always going to be the same that's going to be a 97 but that is with uh, plus 100 on the core so now what I am going to do is I'm going to go ahead and screenshot this and we are going to save it so pictures we're going to select folder and okay and now I did not mean to go to Google and now I'm going to rename this 2080 Ti plus 100 core okay so now we got that and now what I'm gonna do is we're gonna open up MSI afterburner and that was with 100 on the core clock and then if you open up this right here it shows like your actual stats so you can see that the GPU temp went up to 52 the GPU usage 97 uh, you can it, it shows you literally everything you got your GPU clock speed you got your memory clock speed see my core clock went to 2085 or 2100 at one point in time um, so yeah, that shows that. I don't know why Bixby's Which going. Would no. You like me to set this alarm for? No Bixby. No Bixby. Bad. I don't want you to set no alarms. Stop, please. <laughs> okay, but yeah. So that's this is a good way of looking at your statistics. Um, just with MSI Afterburner. Uh, but now what we are going to do is we are going to bump the core clock up to 150 now, and let's go ahead and apply that. So now. I'm going to run it at 150, we will see what the score is with that, and we will come back. Alright, I just wanted to um, record this to show y'all this. We are currently benchmarking the third benchmark, which is plus 150 megahertz on the core clock. And if you look up here at the top, it shows our FPS, it's around 70, 72. Um, you, but what I want to show y'all right now is the core clock. So if you look right here at the core clock, it says graphics. We're running about 2130, 2145 megahertz, which is a huge, huge increase um, from stock. 
I just want to show y'all that. So we are back after running the next benchmark, and I'd like to show y'all before we go get into the score and stuff. I'd like to show y'all if you look here at the max FPS, the max FPS is actually lower than the one before. If you look at the one with the 150 megahertz on the core, we had a max FPS of 91.6. Um, but but our our score our score did go up about 50 50 ish points. Um, our minimum went up a hair. It's like before it was 54.08. Now it is 54.38. Our average went up from 67.48 to 67.86. Um, but I would just like to show you, I just wanted to be able to show you all this. The reason that that happened ha is because of the GPU boost. So now, uh... You will see now whenever I go to MSI Afterburner, it's because I was doing such big jumps on it. Because I went first, the first jump was from 0 to 100. Then we went from 100 to 150. And now it's only a 25 megahertz difference. So it, it wasn't enough for the GPU boost to, to boost it higher than what it was last time. So our overall score is better. But now whenever I put this to 200 if if I pass it and it doesn't crash you will see the max FPS will be around the same that it was before and the average and the minimum should go up as well as the overall score so I'm gonna do it plus 200 on the core next um, let me go ahead and screenshot this and put this with the rest of them do that right there Go to this and then rename. This was 175 on the core. Okay. So now I'm going to run the other one and I'll be back whenever it is done. Guys, we are back and as you can see, we got this notification right here saying that the benchmark has crashed. So what that means is we cannot do 200 on the core, unfortunately, but that's okay. I'm going to back it back down to 175, because that was good. So we'll leave it on 175, and now what we are going to do is we are going to do the memory clock. Now, the memory clock, from what I am told, with, with any 2080 Ti, you should easily be able to do 800 on the memory clock easily. Now be advised if you are using if you are not using a high tier GPU like the 2080 Ti or the 2080 even if you're using like a 2060, 2070, uh, 1660 Ti, 1660 something like that or any in, anything that's lower than that I would say do not go for 800 right off the bat with the memory clock because you do not know if you'll be able to get that stable. You might see artifacting right away, anything like that could happen. So so just be advised, do not start off with 800 if you have a very low tier GPU. I'm only doing this because not only have I done the overclocking before, but with most 2080 Ti's, easily, easily you should be able to get 800 at the minimum. At the bare, bare minimum. So I am going to put it in as 800, apply it, we're going to run the benchmark, and I will be back with the score, guys. All right, so we are on the benchmark here where I just applied 800 megahertz to the memory clock. And I would just like to show you all up here in the stats that now, if you look at the memory, you will see that it said 7,000 before, but now it says 7,799. So I just wanted to show y'all that uh, before we get to the score. So, yep, that is that. So we are back after adding 800 megahertz to the memory clock. And as you can see, it has bumped up our overall score by about 200 points. Um, our minimum FPS is now 53.67 FPS, which originally with, the, with this, it was... Actually, I think it's lower now. Okay, it is lower. The minimum FPS is lower than what it was before. But the average is higher. The average is now 69 FPS. It was 67. The max was 87, and now the max is 91. Um, but yes, our overall score has gone up about 200 points now. So now what we are going to do 
Let's go back to Afterburner. We are going to bump up the memory clock. We're going to go ahead and bump it up to... We'll, we'll see if we can do 1100. Um, 1100 should be good. So I'm going to apply that. And I will be back whenever uh, this next test is completed. Alright, we are back. And as you can see, when we hit on 1100, it actually crashed on us, unfortunately. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Afterburner again. And we're actually going to back it down to 1,000. Okay, not 100. No, I meant to do 1,000. Um, and we're going to run the benchmark on 1,000. See what it does. And we will leave it there and get the final score and see and see how we've come up from stock complete everything all the way up to now. So I'm going to go ahead that's apply. I'm going to go ahead and run this and I'll be back whenever uh, this benchmark is completed, guys. We are back here after running that test, which was plus a thousand on the memory clock. Now, if you look here, if you remember, I didn't, I didn't save it for some reason. I, I didn't save the one which was 800 on the memory. We actually had somewhat of a little bit of a better score there. Um, we had like, I think it was like 50, it was like 50 or 60 points higher, which in theory, that's this not really that much. Um, but yeah, this is this is normally what I run uh, my settings whenever I play games. I normally actually I actually don't run it on 175. I normally do it on plus 150 uh, and 1000 for the memory. So I what I play video games on is this right here. Um, but let's go through let's go through all all the scores. So stock settings. This is what we started out with 8,320. Four. And then after stock, we did plus 100, and it went up to 8,881. And then we went to 150, and we got 9,022. And then we did 175, we got 9,073. And then I didn't save the plus 800, but the final one is going to be 9,207. Um, this is my experience, and now, now keep in mind, uh, with this program, if you look down here at my configuration, I'm using the AMD Ryzen 9 3900X, um, and I have it set to 4.15 gigahertz right now. Um, keep in mind, if you do have a higher overclock on your CPU, this score will be higher as well. Um, because I know whenever I had this CPU overclocked, whenever I was running tests at 4.3 gigahertz, not 4.15, uh, I was getting scores close to 9,900 and 10,000. Um, because uh, the way it works is the more CPU power you got, the better, the, the higher the utilization of your GPU will be. So whenever I had this overclocked to 4.3 gigahertz, my GPU utilization was maxing out at 99%. Um, so just keep that in mind as well when you're doing scores. Also, your score will differ from mine, obviously, because of the different kinds of GPUs, or the different the, the, the different kinds of 2080 Ti's. And also, I am doing a dual monitor setup. So if you are doing a single monitor setup and you're running these tests, uh, you will probably see higher scores than mine, um, just because you're doing a single monitor. Um, but just keep that all in mind. Um, let me know down in the comments below uh, what your scores are with your 2080 Ti's I'd like to see. Also, let me know what your um, what versions of the 2080 Ti's y'all have because I have this one right here. My, my 2080 Ti is the ASUS ROG Strix 2080 Ti. Um, the overclocked edition. So let me know what kind of 2080 Ti y'all have down in the comments. Let me know what your scores are with this. What kind of clock speeds y'all get on the core clock and the, the memory clock. Um, also, let me know down in the comments below if you want me to do a CPU overclocking video. Since I do have one of the new Ryzen 9 3900X processors that came out in July. Did it? It was July, yeah. It came out in July. Um, 
I can do an actual overclocking video on that. Um, and it will be overclocked higher than this if I do that, just to show y'all what it can reach up to. Uh, but the reason I don't have it as high as I normally do is just for stability reasons, uh, temperature reasons. Um, I don't I don't like for it to get too hot, even though it can it it can it can comfortably sit at 80 degrees Celsius all day if it chose to. But I I just don't feel comfortable leaving it that high. That's just my personal preference. Um, I feel like it'd be more stable. Uh, it'd last longer if I keep it. If I keep it, you know, I keep it around like 65 degrees Celsius. Um, but bear bear in mind, I do have a full custom water looped system. Uh, but that that's gonna be it for me today uh, for this video. Um, I hope that y'all did enjoy it. If you did. Hit that like button down below. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you are new to the channel. I stream a lot and I stream uh, I stream Call of Duty. I play I play a lot of video games. It, it doesn't really matter. I play anything really. Um, but if you're into watching streams, uh, subscribe. Hopefully, I will see you all in the future, guys. And my name's Southern Gamer, and I'm out, y'all. Peace.